We're visiting with Bill Abel, the Belfouche Bronx track and field head coach. He had a, really a great state tournament. Yeah, we did. Um, you know, we, we go down, it's the first year as a three day. Crazy thing was, you know, our, our warmest day was something like this. And then we get down there and it's in the 80s. And then I think we, I know we crept up into the 90s on the last day. So heat was kind of a, was an issue or a concern of ours. But you know, as, as far as the state meet goes, it was our first meet where every coach that I had had success. Um, the, you know, starting with the pole vault, we had uh, the opening heights were pretty high. Uh, actually, the opening heights were either at or above everybody's PR. Um, well, not everybody's. Uh, but we had uh, on the girls' side, Sloan Young, she popped, uh, she cleared opening. I know she was kind of stressed about that, but she got that right away. Uh, then on the, on the guys' side, uh, Jordan Sandoval came up a little short with that, but uh, Logan Tyndall, he one jump cleared it. Uh, sadly, though, with Logan, his, uh, his, second, his next jump at 11-6, he uh, dislocated his elbow. So from the highest of highs to the lowest of lows in like three to five minutes, it was, it was kind of sad. Uh, and then Lane Longbreak, he had a competition PR. He's a little upset with his performance. I think um, Lane had really high expectations, which I, I appreciate that. But um, he did have a competition PR, and he, I thought he performed great. Uh, you know, the, the, the jump side of things, uh, Matea Ward, true champion form. She comes right down to her last jump. She's sitting in ninth place, I believe, up to her last jump in the finals, and then she popped a good one and ended up in third. So that was that was great for her, and, and she's such a competitor. Uh, continuing on the girls' side, we brought little Kyra Vandenberg down, our seventh grader. i got to give her props. She's, uh, uh, as a seventh grader, she qualified for three um, individual state meets. She was in cross country, place for us in wrestling, and then she went down um, in the, for the two mile in a um, track. Uh, she's gonna be something to watch out for down the road. She's, she didn't have the, the race that she wanted, um, but it's, you know, it's a lot of pressure um, when you're you know, a little seventh grader, and I think she's gonna, she'll turn out fine. Our girls four by one, um, we were kind of back and forth with that all year, and then we put that guy together. Uh, we made a, uh, a change and uh, put Tori Brill in as, as the, uh, the starter. Uh, went, uh, yeah, Tori Brill to Kaylee Nojeski to Drew Keegan, Matea Ward, and they, they ended up, I want to say they placed sixth, and the, and the boys placed fifth. But, you know, then Drew missed the finals in the 100. She, I don't know where she came from this year. She just kept getting faster and faster, and uh, she missed the finals by, was it? like seven one hundredths of a second so it was a it was a good day good weekend for the girls and you know on the guys side like i just mentioned those the boys four by one just four random dudes i guess if you want to call it that way and and they uh they kept cranking at it and they um they they were their competitors this weekend uh and then again i think they ended up in fifth then on the distance side of things we had uh, uh sawyer clarkson first race you know he, he hurt himself at uh um howard wood he had a for a while, actually, the week of Regions, we didn't even know if he was going to be able to compete. He mm. thought it was a, a stress fracture, and um, turns out that he's beat his body pretty hard, and there's an awful lot of scar tissue in there. And he ran a beautiful two mile. It was great. Um, won the two mile for us, and then he actually was a gold medalist. He had the fastest time in all classes. So it was, it was great for him to finish like that, uh, especially that two mile that, kind of, that seems to be his thing, uh, which is kind of comical, though. They got a, a really cool pitcher of a little brother, seventh grader, um, right as they're at the finish, uh, Sawyer's lapping him. So, and Lennon swears up and down that he didn't lap him. Sawyer, of course, the pitcher's perfect. You know, he's, he's grinning, he's laughing, he knows he's passing his brother, but it was right at the finish. So he kind of lapped him, kind of not. But um, then Sawyer ended up taking second in the, in the mile. Um, he had a four second PR um, running that. So he really, for being off for three weeks, he had an outstanding state meet. And then um, the last one would be uh, uh, Aiden Giffen. Aiden Giffen turned in a great, great state meet. He uh, came up short in the, the Open 100. He took second there. And, and uh, the Boister kid, I got to give him props. He, he had a great, he won the, the one, two, and four. Um, but, uh, you know, so Aiden took, he took second in the 100 and, and second in the 200. And then uh, um, he ended up winning the long jump, which that was, that's kind of his thing. And him and, and Slice have been, Working on that and slice. I know he was wanting. Uh, um, as a jumps coach, sometimes it gets a little, little uh, um, competitive amongst coaches. And 
a lot of them would say it, it made comment about you know get another state champion besides Shayla Howell you know because Shayla was so dominant um, and for him to get it now with Aiden that was that was wonderful I was, I'm so happy for those two because they were uh, yeah they were um, they were loving it so it was, it was just an outstanding meet for everybody well, Aiden and Slice have been looking forward to that for a couple of years oh it was so funny that the the, the day before. Um, <laughs> they were, those guys were just on pins and needles. I've never seen Slice so nervous. I didn't know if his, uh, his wife was expecting a fourth kid or, or what. I have no idea. He was just, I've never seen him so nervous. It, not really nervous, kind of just uptight and, and just wanting to get it going. Well, that's, yeah. a, that's a sign of a good, passionate coach. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. You don't get it much better than that. And then on the thrower's side, we had a gunner guy. Um, I think he ended up throwing like 126 feet. He came into the meet. Um, he was our. He was the 24th thrower. So that means he had the lowest throw of them all. And then he ends up placing 13th out of it. So Gunner was able to, to come up with his success. Him and Coach Haxton, which that's that's a nice thing because I know that's something that that Haxton's been kind of worried about since we had that um, kid a couple years ago. So it was, it was a good thing. It was a good day for everybody. Well, Coach, we really appreciate you taking time to visit with us. This is your last visit with us as you're retiring. Yeah, I've been here in Bell for nine years. Um, from where we started to where we finished, I, I'm pretty, I'm happy. Um, we were able to finish the both seasons, wrestling and track, um, on a high note. Um, you know, the the boys placed in fourth as a team for track. That's the second time in school history. I'm super excited about that. And I've, you know, while I've been in Bell, I've had some just incredible memories, and I've had some heartaches, and I've had some uh, frustrations. But overall, I'm, I'm just blessed to have, have been able to be here and coach these kids and and you know my my coaching staff uh, for track is just it's amazing they're they're a great group of people um when i was when i was gone uh you know i was i, I had to be gone for about three weeks and they took over and no hiccups no no nothing and i just hope one of those guys get the nod to, to take over for me and they can take it up to the next level all right thanks coach Thank you, and thanks, thank you guys at Black Hills TV for always coming out and supporting the Bronx. I appreciate it.